Hello, my most adventurous eyes, and welcome to the Adventurous Art Room. Today we are focusing on African sunsets. I'm really excited to get started. Remember, you can always send your finished pieces to the Adventurous Art Room at gmail.com. What you guys are going to need today is some aluminum foil, washable markers, a sponge and water, a sharpie if you have one, and some white paper. Let's get ready. So let's talk about African sunsets. First things first, when we look at an African sunset, what do you notice about the tree? Try and think of three things you notice about this tree that's different from a tree that you see outside. Pause the video and have a think. Hey, so did you think of anything interesting about this tree? Let's talk about it. So you'll notice that this tree has a lot of leaves at the top, but not many at the bottom. What kind of animal could you find in Africa that would mean that this would happen? Have a think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, so we have massive giraffes. We have massive elephants. They are all really big animals that can reach really high up into the tree to eat those leaves. So when we look at the trees in the African savanna, you'll see that it has a very bare trunk. That's because of all the amazing big animals that Africa has. So when we create our African sunset, I want you to focus on creating those kind of shaped trees. The other thing we'll notice is when we make a sunset, you create something called a silhouette. A silhouette is a object in front of a sun or a light that creates shadow. So you can see that my tree is a silhouette of a tree. That means it's the shadow part of the tree. Now, what I want you to think about is what animals and what kind of uh, creatures have Africa savannas got. Then we're gonna start applying them to our artwork and let's get started. I am so excited about this week's theme. So we're gonna focus, like I said, on creating that background first. And guys, I'm, I'm excited, I'm not gonna lie. I watched The Lion King last night, really got into it, and I was singing to the Beyonce um, soundtrack, had a great time. Anyway, I digress. Let's get this background sorted. So first things first, you're gonna need your tin foil, um, sorry, aluminum foil. Um, flat it down, try and keep it nice and even. Remember, when we want to flatten our aluminum foil, we don't want to use our hands because our hands have grease on them. So we flat it nice and carefully. Lift this up. Oh, before we lift it up, let's just mark those corners in. That way we know that we don't have to color in any wider than where our edge of our paper reaches. Like this. So our paper is going to go on top of this foil. And we're gonna have our sunset right here. So I'm gonna get my warm colors. Remember, warm colors are the ones that make us feel warm. They remind us of things like the sun and light and heat and things like that. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding our purple color to the sky at the very top. Because if we remember on some of them, it had purple right at the very top. And Coloring in on one side of my paper, sorry, one side of my foil to the other. Perfect. Bring it down. Leaving some areas for us to do that blending technique I was telling you about. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cap on, get myself my red color, and create a line of red across my foil. And we kind of want to see a bit of an overlap of those two colors because that means that when we add water to this that's how it's going to do that blending technique we were talking about so you might even go back over it with the purple again to really blend them together then i'm going to take my orange i'm using all our warm colors right now i'm coloring in perfect nice i like it all right, let me see if I can make sure, make sure you guys can see that nice and clearly. Maybe that's better. Oh yeah, you can see it much better without the light on. Okay. Okay, next up, a little bit of yellow at the base. Oh, got my lid off. There we go, get that yellow on there. Oh, that's so pretty. And remember, we wanna try and create that overlap of colors. So we're going all the way to the edges of where we mark for our paper to go on top of. We don't want to miss any areas of our paper. Perfect. 
And again, we're going to do that overlap. So I'm going to actually go back again and get my orange and go over the yellow. So there's that overlap. Really blend them together nicely. Then I'm going to take that red and kind of go back in the red up here, creating that overlap. We really want to make this look like a real sunset. Nice and blended. And then last but not least, we're going to go back in that purple and rework that purple into that red. Get that blend in. Perfect. All right. I like that. One. Perfect. Oh, and you can see it much better on the camera without my um, light on. Okay, so what we're going to do is move this out of the way. And you want to grab your paper. And this is where we're going to use that water I talked about um, on a sponge or a paintbrush. I'm actually going to use a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can just dip it in some water in a cup or something like that. But I'm going to spritz my paper to evenly cover it with some water. There we go. And then I'm going to use my sponge just to make sure that that's, again, all over that paper evenly. So that's a bit dry in this corner right here. Make sure that's really wet. Perfect. This is one of those things that you really just have to pr practice and have a go, try a few different things because some sometimes it'll actually look better if you make a mistake. You never know. So have a go, see what happens. Put this out of the way again. Bring back our foil. Here the guy is. All right, and then we're going to take our paper we just wet and stick it on top, and then press and massage the back of that paper. Oh my gosh, you can see it's coming through already. It's one of my favorite at home techniques is foil and markers. Okay, let me see down here. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, I feel like I can peel it off and see what. Nice. Oh wow, look at that. That's beautiful. That came out so pretty. Perfect. Okay, now what we can do is we can put this to one side. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is add our um, horizon line. You want to make sure that your horizon line goes the bottom ac across the bottom of the page. I'm going to use this pencil so you guys can see it. And we want to make it, if you make it a straight line, I think that looks a little bit weird. We always want to kind of have it looking like it's a slight wobble. So I'm going to have it going, I'm going to press hard and hopefully, you can, yeah, you can see that great. Alright, so I'm going to come up here. And I even make little zigzags because that's where my grass is going to go. So I want it to feel really natural coming down, maybe coming back up. And I'm going to have my tree over there. It's perfect. So that's my horizon line. That's where the land meets the sky. That's going to go right there. Then I'm going to be creating a really big sun. Now, it's up to you how you make a sun. I have yellow oil pastel, and oil pastel is great for going on top of other things. If you don't have a yellow oil pastel, you could use a scrap piece of paper, color it in yellow, and cut it out as a circle and stick it down. I Like I said, I'm going to use this guy. And I want to make mine, I'm trying to decide if I want my sun over here or in the middle. I think I'm going to do it in the middle. And I'm going to make it really big, because if you remember the pictures I showed you at the beginning, the sunsets in Africa are huge. They have these beautiful sunsets. So I've got my sun really big right here in the middle. Perfect. Okay, so there's that sun. And I'm going to color it in yellow. Oops, with my oil pastel. And if your oil pastels are dirty, just give them a clean on some scrap paper on this side like this. And it cleans them really nicely. So I'm going to get a cross across in the yellow. And if you want to make it so that the sun is setting, that means you would stop it on that horizon line. Oh my gosh, it looks so pretty already. Really bright yellow. <laughs> Mine keeps breaking. <laughs> it's going to be the tiniest oil pastel by the time I'm done. Alrighty, perfect. There's my yellow. Really vibrant sun. And like I said, you can cut yours out if you want to. Alright, perfect. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sharpie or my black um, marker and I'm going to be coloring along that line I created at the bottom. So I'm going to go across. Give a little grass I was talking about. All the way down here. Oops. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to color that guy in and I'll see you in a second. 
Okay, so we are all done with coloring in our horizon line and below in that black fashion. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on creating our silhouettes. Remember, silhouettes are when you have an object in front of the sun and it creates that shadow effect. So we're going to create a very large tree right here and we want it to make it look like it's been eaten from the base up. So we want no leaves at the bottom. Remember those African trees have all those foliages at the top just like I described because the elephants and the giraffes can eat really high up. So we're going to start, grab a sharpie or a pencil, whatever's easiest, and pause the video when you need to, but we're going to start working our way up here. So the base of my tree comes up, and it's actually going to go off the page over here. Perfect. Next we're going to have our tree start right here, coming up again. It's kind of creating this kind of like V shape at the top right there. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create two V shapes on our tree. The first one's going to go right here. So I'm creating a V shape. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a second one over here. And what they do is they act as if the tree is breaking into different sections. I'm going to show you how that works right now. So my first V, I'm going to extend it up. So it almost reaches this guy right here. Perfect. This one, I'm going to bring it up. Same again to reach the top of that. And then this one goes off the page. Perfect. We actually, I might make this one even taller. Perfect. There we go. That makes our tree look very realistic. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add that foliage or the leaves at the top. Remember, they've been eaten by a big animal like a giraffe or something like that. So we're going to create those cloud shapes all the way across here and I'm going to create another one down here lots of cloud shapes and then maybe one going off the page too and I'm going to have one coming up above nice look at those cloud shapes perfect going off the page coming back down perfect now we want to color this in black when we color it in black though we want to leave a little gap around those different clouds so I'm kind of creating a second outline around the gap. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this. There we go. So I'm creating that kind of second layer and I'm not going to color that part in and that's going to keep the different layers separate when I color in to make my silhouette. There we go. All right, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back. Perfect. Check that out. I'm really happy with the way that silhouette looks. It looks like everybody's eating up here and they've already eaten down here. So that's perfect. Next step, we are going to draw a mummy giraffe and a baby giraffe on this side. And what I want to do is really take your time, follow the video. If you need to pause it, you can. I'm going to zoom in. So we want to make sure as well. Let me zoom back out one second. I'm sorry. We want to make sure that our giraffe is correct in scale. So we don't want to make our giraffe huge because we don't want them to be bigger than the tree. So I'm going to make mine approximately this big for the mummy and approximately this big for the baby. And we'll see how that goes. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to zoom in though so you guys can see where I'm going to draw mine. Okay, so first things first, we are going to draw the mummy giraffe. We are going to draw first her neck and her front leg. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go from my son, I'm going to kind of go across my son to about here. And I don't want to touch the sun, I want to bring it down the side. So, neck coming down, and then we're going to start bringing it out a little bit because the front leg comes out, and then down to the bottom of the horizon line. Perfect. It's kind of a weird shaped line. Next up, we are going to draw its head. Its head wants to be kind of like a U shape on the side pointing down here. So, it's as if it's looking at its baby. So, there's my U shape. Then I'm going to draw two triangles and two lines, but we're going to do it triangle, line, line, triangle for the ears and those little horns that they have. So I'm going to do a triangle and then a line, then we're going to come across a bit, then another line, and then we're going to do that other triangle up here, pointing that way. Perfect. That's its head and its ears. Then we're going to come down from kind of like where his mouth would be but down to create the other side of his neck. And we want it to get slightly wider as we work our way down, and then stop. Perfect, good job guys. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring across the back here, and then down for his tail, and then we'll do the legs. 
and I didn't realize that giraffes have such long tails. They're almost as long as their actual legs. So his tail comes down. That's its tail. You can add a little bit of hair on the bottom if you want. What we're going to do is we're going to come back up to this kind of area right here and then come back down for the back leg. So down here for that back leg. Look how great that looks. She looks perfect. Now, it's up to you how many legs you like to include because we're creating a silhouette. So remember, we want it to make it look really natural, like the legs are moving and that um, one leg is behind the other. So first of all, I'm going to do the f these two legs that you would see on this side. Then we'll do the back ones afterwards. So you're going to come up the side of that leg, and then we're going to get wider. So we're going to come up here, like that. Then what we're going to do is create the belly shape, like that. Perfect. And then we're going to come back down for this leg. So we're going to come back down like that. To its knee area and then we're probably going to make it a little bit straighter perfect guys that's awesome now you can leave it as that if you want or you can try and add those second legs in so i'm going to bring the second back leg down same as that one and then down again but we're going to make sure that there's a gap like that perfect and then the front one i'm actually going to bring it down here as if it's walking there we go Perfect. Excellent job, guys. That looks great. Okay, now what we want to do is create the baby. So the baby's going to go right here as if she's looking down. So I'm going to create the um, neck first. So I don't want it to be as tall as this one. So I'm going to create the neck coming down. There we go. And then we're going to create the back all the way to his tail. Like that. Perfect. Then we're going to create the other half of his neck. So we're going to give it a little bit of a gap and then come back down and stop right there. Perfect. Now I'll add the head in because we don't want him to be headless. That's a bit strange. So we're going to have his head come down in another U shape. Perfect. And then we're going to go triangle, line, little movement, then a line, and then that second triangle. And that kind of gives it that realistic effect. Let's add those legs in. So we'll continue this guy down here. Give him a knee bend. Remember, you can always slow the video down if you want to. I'm going to make him look like he's walking. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up. Pretty much the same width apart to the knee area. And then back up. Perfect. Then we're going to give him his belly. Good job. He looks like he's about to run. And then we're going to go down and then back down and then back perfect let's add that second leg in sorry we'll add the back of the leg in first so we're gonna go up and then up oh, that looks so fun it looks like you're having a great time you know what i think i'm only gonna add one more leg in just that front one it looks like it should be right there coming down in between i'll let you guys take a look at that and see how you feel now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna pause that video and color this in Alrighty, our silhouettes are done. Perfect. Now what I want you to do is add those little finishing touches. So let's add some kind of grass details around the base of the tree. Kind of just like flicking your pen up. Kind of different lengths, different sizes. Try and make it feel very natural. As if there's lots of grass around the base of the tree. Maybe a couple of little pieces here and there. Around the base of the giraffe. Maybe down here too. It's up to you how you want to do that. Perfect. Alrighty, next up we are going to add a couple of birds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some birds. Don't make them massive, guys. We want them to be in perspective. So we want them to be about the right size. So I'm going to make a couple of these kind of like V, wide V shapes, like so. Everybody knows how to make those as birds. But I have a little trick to make them even better. You're going to add a line at the base kind of pointing towards the direction the birds are flying and that looks like the body of the bird makes them look a little bit more realistic too I'm going to add one over here add that line at the bottom to make them look a little bit more like real birds flying in the air perfect alrighty next up and finally we're going to add that kind of look as if there's kind of like um, clouds in front of the, the sun if you have like different color oil pastels you might want to give those a go I'm going to use my sharpie and I'm going to kind of let my sharpie drag across that sun so I'm kind of going like this kind of lightly letting it kind of create color kind of there we go perfect 
and this is this is my Bob Ross moment because not very often I will kind of like get excited about lines and little marks but this is one of those moments because we're trying to create that effect of that kind of cloud covering that sun perfect maybe I'll go this way a bit all right guys and that maybe one more right here Okay, there we go. Alrighty, and that, my friends, is our African savannah sunset. See you again real soon. Bye!